This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Back when I was a kid, I had the Atari 2600. I loved playing the games on there, and I loved playing Centipede. It was fun trying to shoot the centipede coming down, hitting the mushrooms. Well today we're going to be talking about a board game analog implementation of this Hey, guess what? It's called Centipede. This is from IDW. It's for two or four players. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to play. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Check out the bits in this game. We have the green centipede. We have the spider, the mushrooms, the flea, the gnome. There's also a blue centipede and a blue gnome as well. I love the old style. They actually looks like it's in those old pixelated games. Now my version also came with this limited edition Atari centipede patch. I'm not sure which copies these are in, but I probably most of them, if not all. Now the game is two or four players. This is the two player version. One player is going to play the gnome. They're going to be down here. They'll get four cards that will help them out throughout the game. They're also going to have some dice that they'll use to select actions. The centipede player is going to have a deck of 11 centipede cards. They'll draw three into their hand. And this is just a player to say how fast the centipede moves. Now throughout the setup, each column at the beginning is going to get three mushrooms. You'll alternate turns between the gnome player and the centipede player, placing three mushrooms and empty squares in a specific column. And then the centipede player will be able to bring the centipede out and move six times. So it might look something like this, but it will always look quite different depending on how you set up and where the centipede starts. The gnome wins by completely eliminating all of the pieces of the centipede on the board. The centipede wins by having the head of the centipede come into any of the squares on the zone or on their turn having any one of the bugs just above the gnome. The gnome will take the first actions and then it will go back and forth with the centipede and the gnome throughout the game. On the gnome's turn, they're going to select one of the dice from the dice pool here. Let's say they select this two and then the magic wand shooting here. So they would just remove this from the card and you have to do actions from left to right. So this is, I have to move two, then I have to shoot. If I did this one, I'd have to move four, then I'd have to shoot twice. You have to go in order from left to right. So here's two. I can move the gnome either way, but I have to move the full amount. I can't move up to two. I have to move exactly two. And I can move two this way or move two this way. If I was already against the end here, I could only move to the right. If I was here and I decided to move left, I would just stop. You don't wrap around. So let's say I move two here, and then I'm going to shoot once. You shoot straight up. So it would hit this mushroom, and this mushroom would be gone. Now, during your turn, you can use one or more of the cards you've started with. This one allows you to refresh the dice pool, re-roll them all, and place them back on. Here gives you another shot. This gives you one more movement, and this allows you to move a mushroom. So let's say I want to flip this one over. I want to remove a mushroom. I remove this one. Now, let's say I use this to do another shot. Well, it's going to shoot straight up all the way, and it's going to hit and remove this part of the centipede. Now, the next piece behind that will now flip over, and it will now be a new centipede. So there's actually two of them on the board. Now anytime uh, the gnome shoots either a piece of centipede or any of the bugs, whether it's a spider or whether it's a flea, those become mushrooms. So the mushroom will be placed here and there's that new centipede. Now if at the end of your turn you did not flip any of these, you'd be able to flip one back over, but we did use them so we can't do that. Also notice that one of the actions on this dice, if I had taken this dice, I would have moved three, shot, and then that little card means I can flip one over. Now as the centipedes turn, they remember they have three cards in their hand. They're going to play a card, then they're going to move all their bugs, which includes the centipede, and then they're going to draw up a card. Um, so let's look at the different possibilities of the cards that they can play. Now remember, you're only playing one card, but I'm going to go through all the different actions that you possibly could do. So the mushroom, you can either place a mushroom in any empty spot that's not adjacent to a centipede, or you can remove any mushroom on the board. So let's say the centipede removes this one. And that's what you do with the mushroom card. Again, you're only playing one card, but let's go over some of the other ones. The spider says after you have moved all the creatures, you would get to place one of these in one of the empty spaces on the left or right of the board. The baby centipede allows you to spawn a length one centipede in one of the spawn points. There's two of them. There's one here. There's one on the other side of the board. The berserk card would allow you to, after you've moved all your creatures, to move your centipede straight down without changing it facing towards the gnome. The flea would allow you to spawn a flea in any empty space on your side of the board. 
Now the centipede card allows you to spawn all pieces from your color centipede that aren't on the board through one of the spawn points, but then you would place this under your side of the board and it would give you plus one speed to all your creatures. So it's going to give you, a, and it's basically out of the game, but it's helping you give you ability for the rest of the game. After you've played your one card, uh, you'd get to move all your bugs in any order. So let's go over the different bug movement. Uh, let's say we move this centipede. Now this centipede is four length, so that means it's speed two. Of course, if we had played that centipede card, it'd be three, but let's just assume we didn't. Uh, you have a speed two there. So this one would move two. So basically it's going to go one, and this one basically would come down like this, like this, and we go two. So it would look just like this that so that centipede had moved now i have another centipede that was one let's just say that one's gonna move four now this one anytime you hit something it moves down and then to the other direction but if there's if there's a mushroom there it will just remove it from the board this centipede was moving this way and it's going to move four so because this mushroom's here anytime you're moving down it just removes it now it would be going this way but it hits an object so it's going to go down so that is two and it would start to go the other direction it hits a mushroom three it would start to go this way, and it can't four. So this centipede, that was a great move to get that little centipede down far. This one, because it's a, uh, one centipede, it's going to go four, one, two, three, and it's going to remove this mushroom because it's below it, four. Spider can move only diagonally or vertically, never horizontally, and it can move up to nine squares, your choice. But as it moves, it destroys any mushrooms in its way. So let's say I did one, two, and I just stopped it there. And now it's getting closer, but it's also protected sort of by a mushroom there. Again, if any of your bugs on your turn end up getting right above the gnome, you would win. Now the flea must move exactly two squares, and it always has to go in a straight line towards the gnome player. It also removes any mushrooms or bugs that it runs into, so the flea can actually take out your centipede. If this was here, it would actually take out, you could actually lose the game that way. So, but it's gonna go one, two, and then if you want to, you may, if you have some available, place mushrooms on the place that it came from. And it just goes back and forth like this. If at the beginning of a turn, the gnome has one die, they automatically refresh, they take the dice, they reroll it, put it on here, do their thing, and they're taking actions and the centipede's taking actions just as I showed until one of those win conditions I mentioned earlier happens. There's also a four player variant of this game and there's another centipede, that blue one and another gnome. And how this works is each team will sit on the same side of the table. They'll both have the same color. One will play the centipede, one will play the gnome. When the gnome is selecting a die, it's removing it from here and it removes it for the other team's gnomes. So you can actually play these actions to stop the other team from playing those actions. And of course, whichever team wins, uh, either the centipede or the gnome, that team wins. All right, well, as I mentioned in the intro, I love, love, love the nostalgic theme here. I mean, this is close to my heart. As soon as I had heard about this uh, at Gamma early this year, this was on my top Gamma games that I was looking forward to. I mean, not only is it an awesome theme, awesome, great IP, but it also is, you know, Jonathan Gilmore is involved. So this one got my attention. I love the theme of this. I also love the pixelated bits that are in this game. You know, the mushrooms and the, the bugs and the centipedes themselves, the wooden bits. You know, it looks like and feels like you're playing an older game, and I liked how I carried that to the table. I liked the asymmetry of this game, where, you know, one person or player is playing, you know, the centipede, the other is playing the gnome, and of course they both feel very different. It's a tug of war, and it's fun to play both sides back to back, and, uh, you, know, you know, play that where it does feel like a very different game on both sides. I thought they did a good job of capturing that. And I think they did a good job of capturing the feeling of the centipede moving and what they were doing. So I think they did a good job there. I really loved the dice pool that the gnome grabs from where they have the six dice, there's different ones and they're pulling them off. And as they're pulling them off, they're getting less and less choices as the turns go on. Uh, and the centipede player is able to see what choices they have left and try to maybe change what they're gonna do with it. But at the same time, the gnome can flip one of those cards and kind of reshuffle when the centipede's not expecting it. But I love the way that dice pool worked, a good balance of luck and strategy there. Now this game, had more depth than I originally thought it would, and I originally thought it did uh, after the first couple plays. And as you start to play this more than more, uh, wow, I was just really kind of blown away of, of how abstracted and chessy it felt like with bringing your spider out to, you know, act it almost like a bishop where it's going to be sort of blocking spaces that that gnome's really going to be able to end up at the end of the turn. You got, you know, you got a spider over here, 
you've got a flea coming down over here and sooner or later they're going to feel constricted like oh, i can't really go too many places right now you're trying to protect where you're going to be going there uh, also, you know, hey, if I'm shooting this and it's going to turn that to a mushroom and then this can go over there and there's a lot of looking forward and trying to predict what that centipede is going to do and what's going to happen if certain things happen. And I just felt like there was more depth going on here than, than meets the eye and I really enjoyed that. And even I'm sure I'm going to be learning new things even after the multiple plays that I've had already. Uh, I like the aspect that there's two different ways to play the game. You got the two player game and the four player game. At first, I didn't enjoy the four-player game that much because with two centipedes running around and they're both hitting each other and sometimes taking each other out, and it was it felt pretty chaotic during sort of the first couple times I played it that way. But then once the players knew more about what was going on, I actually quite enjoyed it because it was it was fun to kind of talk it over with my partner and see, since you're sitting on the same side of the table and both you take your turns side by side, one after another, you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to work together and see what you each have planned and what you're talking about, how you can work, help each other out. I like that aspect of it. Some people probably are, might not like that because they, they just want to play person versus person. They don't like semi-cooperative or cooperative. Uh, so some people might not like that four-player version, but I've, I liked it because it felt, even though you're playing the same game, under pretty much the same rules, it felt very different, and I liked that aspect of it. All right, cons. Well, I always try to give fair reviews of pros and cons, so what are things that could be cons for you or they were for me? Well, for some, I think the game's gonna be too abstracted. If you don't like abstract games or you don't like games that are very abstracted, this is one that is pretty abstract, uh, the way it works. However, I, I just, this is one of those games where if you don't like abstract games but you love the theme and you played Centipede, still give this one a try. I found that the game is good. It's solid. I enjoyed it, but I think I enjoyed the thing as a package even more because of the theme and the nostalgic value that the whole, some of its parts, you know, the sum of everything was better than, than, than the game itself because of everything that wrapped around it. But it is very abstract and it might be too abstracted for some. Uh, I found, we played this with a couple of younger people, and by younger I mean mid-20s, who never played Centipede before. Uh, and we found that it was actually really hard for them to sort of visualize how the centipede works. I mean, you can teach them how it works, but going on, like, they can't look ahead. In this game, you really do have to sort of look ahead a few turns, thinking about the centipede, what you can do, how it will react. And we found that if you haven't played centipede before, if you're some of that millennial crowd, maybe you haven't played it, it's going to be a little hard to visualize, we found, is how the centipede works. You're going to have to play it a few times to really cement how that works in your head. Um, uh, I, I, you know, the... the the player aid itself uh, had some interesting stuff on there, but there were some things about the, they had information about the bugs, but they didn't, they, there was enough room to just put a couple more things to make it more useful. For example, the spider can move up to nine. You don't have to move it all nine and it can move down or diagonal, but the, the flea must move to, and you have to move it, you know, and, and there, and, you know, add mushrooms and, and there, so there was, there was enough room on that card to put some of the very important parts of those bugs of how they work differently. I wish they would have added those there. Uh, and also in the beginning of the game, you have this thing where you're placing mushrooms and the first couple times that you play the game, you're just going to be willy nilly, whatever. You're not really going to know what to do. I wish they had had sort of thought through a well-balanced setup for the beginning and sort of set that up so that, hey, if it's your first time playing, set the board up like this. After you're advanced and you've played a bunch of times, feel free to set it up openly like this. So any games that have like a strategic thing during setup, I never quite like having that without a, a, a recommended beginner setup. So I would have liked to have seen that in the development of this game. In other words, I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you like abstract games or and or you like the theme of this, check it out. Uh, uh, it, again, very different games, two and four player, but one I enjoyed and that's Centipede. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.